All right, so I'm gonna do a quick tour of my poultry facility. I've done a video before kind of touring my uh, chicken coop I built. I built this coop two summers ago, and uh, I did a kind of a tour of it then, but I've done a few things different with it now and some updates. Uh, I built the thing out of telephone poles, you can see here on the edges, as, a, as kind of a pole barn, uh, and then I used lumber from Lowe's that they sell that's bent uh, you know, for like 10 cents on the dollar uh, to make almost everything else on it. Uh, really the important thing out here is this metal at the bottom that I put on these facilities. It goes underground quite a ways. Uh, I, I dig a trench between all the main uprights down deep uh, and then I bury that metal down there so that things can't dig in to get you know, to get down inside, <clears throat> like critters, we have raccoons and possums uh, uh, that, you know, everything wants to eat a chicken. And I also have some larger predators out here. I have quite a few foxes. Um, uh, just last week, I had a bobcat try and get into my grow-out pen for my ducks uh, that, I, that I had just outside the house up there. I have coyotes, all kinds of stuff. Snakes, you know, wanting to get in and get the eggs. About everything out here. Uh, eats a chicken. And so, anyway, I build these uh, facilities kind of bomb-proof so nothing can get through them. I won't go too far into everything about this because I've already done another video on it, but I'll show you some of the things. You can go inside the inside part of the hen house here. I do a deep litter system. Uh, as you can see, this goes down way, 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 way down deep. Um, this is just wood chips. And at the end of the year, I'll shovel all this out into a pickup bed, and, and local gardeners use it on their on their gardens. And then I have the roost over here in the side. As you can see, the roost goes up, and I can I can chain it up here. Um, a little chain to hold it up, so I can you know so I can work in here and and not have to have that in my way. So that's the roost and the nest boxes over there, and then there's the door, of course that that leads out. I'll show you the outside. This is the watering system I've come up with. I use these bus tubs, this restaurant supply bus tubs, and they hold, you know, lots and lots of gallons of water in there. And um, you can slide it under here like this, and that's days and days worth of water. And I'll show you on the inside I've built before they can drink from it. It's very easy to pull that out though and fill it back with water with a hose. There's no hanging things in here, no little watering systems. And I can also drop a heater. Uh, I have one just right in here, uh, an electric heater in there in the winter and it won't ever freeze up. So that's how, that's how I handle the watering of these birds. Walk around here. This is the outdoor run part. I'll show you. The inside here. I have a couple big hanging feeders in here out of the out of the rain. Everything's electrified and lit. Metal roofed. And there's my girls. I keep free choice uh, oyster shell and grit in here and I also mix it in with their food. And then here's that watering system I was talking to you about. So I've cut three holes out of a piece of metal here so they can't roost on here and, and mess in, in the water. But they can get to it really easily. And then of course I can I can shut this this door down and keep them in there or out here if I need to work with them. <laughs> so that's the main chicken coop and run. Jack girls. If we go back here, so I built this run two summers ago. And last winter I built this breeding facility back here where I can separate specific uh, roosters and hens or ducks and and put them in these breeding pens uh, when it's time to get eggs for incubation so there's uh there's a breeding pen here with a nest box over here where i can collect the eggs and a roosting box and then there's one on the other side exactly like it just mirror image and then in between it is you know you can put quail in there or right now i'm using it for a, a, um, a brooder you can see my Americana chicks are in there right now. And then in here I have a heater for them. I don't use heat lamps in this. I just use one of these. It looks kind of like a pancake griddle. Uh, and it's warm. And they can get under there and it keeps them warm. Because it's, it's getting down to the 60s at night. And these little baby chicks just can't handle that yet. 
So anyway, that's that's where uh, that's where I can do my brooding, and uh, once they're big enough to come out of here, but not large enough to go in there, then I can put them in these breeding pens also. So all my brooding and all my grow out is done outdoors now. I can still do it in, in the garage in my brooding pens, but this facility was kind of built for that. And this is, of course, the back of the back of the hen house. I can collect eggs from out here if I want. Uh, I built the nest boxes where they come out like this, and makes it pretty easy uh, to grab them out here and not have to go in there and get in all that mess if I don't want to and I just store store things back here I buy these uh, dog or you know cat crates pet crates at garage sales and stuff all the time for a few bucks and they're just great to haul chickens around in so anyway that's the that's the hen house in the chicken run facility and then the breeding pens in the in the brooder and then I just built this a few weeks ago this is my uh, duck facility where I house my ducks. It's built the same way. If you look, it has that metal all the way around the outside that goes down underneath the ground. I put a porch on this just to keep more water from getting down in there. If you give ducks a little bit of mud, they can make it into a tremendous amount of mud really quickly. You know, uh, they need a lot of water and they need to be able to play in that water, but you also want to keep their bodies out of it so they don't waste in it and they don't uh, splash it completely out. So I have a I, same kind of watering system as I have here. Uh, I have also uh, on the ground back here. So anyway, this is the, this is the duck house. It has a porch on it, deck. It's all treated wood. I put a couple benches here. As you can see, it's a single pitch roof, just like the chicken coop. Kind of matches it. <clears throat> big deck on it and there's doors to the front doors to the back and there's my ducks I'm going here I have some anconas and some pecans in here right now and this is their water they they can get their head in there but not their body and so from the outside I can really easily fill all three of those with water and that's plenty of water for the ducks for several days. And they can't splash it out of there. Silly guys. I'll show you this watering system. It's the same thing. I put a cane bolt on this one to hold a little falling door here. You see the cane bolt in the middle. And so we pull this. That falls down. And I can pull these tubs out one by one. Show you here. I can dump them, and then I can fill them with a hose and kick them back in there. And then when the door, of course, goes back up, um, it makes it secure. So that's how I do the watering system for these ducks. Like I said earlier, ducks have to have a lot of water to get their head down in, and they need to blow out their nostrils and digest with it and wash with it. But if you can keep their bodies out of it and keep them from, you know, defecating in there and uh, and splashing it all out, you, you've really kind of won the game. And that keeps their water clean and makes them a lot easier to handle as, as pets. So that's the duck facility. I just finished it, like I say last week. Um, I just build these by hand. I get telephone poles from my local electric co-op that are old and used and I stick them in the ground and stand them upright and then frame them in. And uh, these, these kind of facilities really work out great. Like I say, I buy wood from Lowe's that's culled out and they're ready to sell cheap because it's bent or not perfect. And if you're building them by hand, you can you know, take your time. Even the siding on this is made from uh, fence, fence pickets that you get from Lowe's. Here's a whole bunch more I got. And you just, I do a lap siding technique just using these treated wood fence pickets. See, they're not perfect. There's some cup to that one, and this one turns just a little bit, but my gosh, for, um, for siding an animal facility, they're absolutely perfect. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of the full tour of my poultry facility as it is right now. Hope you guys enjoy. We'll see you later.